Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. It's JF Butler. Today I'm, I'm going to be sharing 13 tips that I've learned over the past few years of doing Lego stop motion animation. Now I must say, uh, before you take me as gospel or you uh, quote what I say, I am still a beginner. I guess you could call, call me an amateur at this point but I do not consider myself a professional whatsoever. I've learned these tips through watching uh, other videos that show tips and also through my own experience. Um, by this point, I've produced about three successful stop motions in various length. Um, but yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get to the first tip. All right, tip number one. It is this stuff. This stuff right here has helped me so much. Now what this is, this is a wall putty, P-U-T-T-Y. Um, it's used for, you know, repairing holes and walls and stuff like that. Uh, but here, I'm using it as a, a tool to hold down my set. Hold down my set, hold down, you know, everything in the rear there. Got putty there, got putty there, there. And you can see that, you know, if I get up and I hit my table, it won't move. Now that's really nice. It keeps it really secure. And also I put the putty on my camera mount. So when I also accidentally hit my desk, it doesn't move. So everything stays really, really stable. Um, and also when you're done, you can just you can just pick it up and put it back in a pile. So you can also use uh, tape for this, but I recommend wall putty because wall putty is really cheap and it's relatively reusable. It will it will wear out, but it takes a long time. So yeah, that is my first major tip. Okay, my second major tip is the is the setting, um, and what I mean by this is you don't have to like, you know build you know build everything you can just build like certain parts what the viewer is only going to see so i built you know like this grassy area here and then i built like a hill that the uh viewer viewer will also see and then i put some trees behind that and then i have the blue background behind that and also i have it uh spaced out for depth of field you know to give that impression as you can see on my camera here, uh, this is what it looks like from the, uh, the viewer's point of view. You can see on the corner there, you can kind of see past the, the background. Uh, I'll have to fix that. But yeah, this, this gives like a really good, you know, like impression of like a battlefield. So yeah, that is my uh, second tip. My third tip is the program itself. So what I'm using here is a relatively expensive program called Dragon Frame. Also it comes with a little controller there. I'll get to that later. Um, but Dragon Frame is relatively expensive. I think it's $300 or more. Um, professionals use this. I've started using this recently and I really love it. It has a lot of cool options. However, um, don't get this if you're if you're brand new and you're starting new in stop motion. I would recommend uh, DigiCam. Now DigiCam lets lets you hook up your DSLR camera or mobile phone or any other like webcams, webcams or or whatever. It's pretty similar to this. It has uh, similar uh, tools, um, but yeah, it's good enough, and you should work with that for a while before you actually invest money into something like Dragon Frame. So yeah, DigiCam, I really recommend that. All right, my fourth tip is uh, an ability you should use called onion skinning. It is really useful. It makes animating uh, much easier. As you can see, you see my hand here, but it looks, it looks a little transparent. That's because I'm using uh, onion skinning. So when I move the vehicle here, you can see the transparency is showing the new frame and like where it's going and yeah you can just see like how it's moving so it just gives you like a 
like a really good reference point and it lets you animate fine movements much more easier. And then when I take the picture, yep, just goes back to normal. And then when I move it again, yep, it's just using the last picture taken. So yeah, use onion skinning and I believe, yeah, DigiCam also has it as an ability. All right, my fifth tip um, is called the controller. So having like a controller or a mini keyboard or something like that, or, or a stream deck, I would actually recommend a stream deck. It's really useful. You, you can just like use this to uh, hit keys, you know, put on your lap or, or put it next to you while you're animating. And instead of going over to the, to the laptop or the computer and hitting the keys, you can just have a, a controller with you. So some sort of like stream deck or something like that. You can, you can find them out there for pretty cheap. Um, but this one, this specific one came with, uh, came with Dragon Frame. You don't, this is not required. It's just, it's just a, a quality of life thing. So yeah, that's my fifth tip. All right, my uh, sixth tip is something called organization. So you should just kind of separate um, any projects you're working on, you know, into their own folders. Like here, I have my last one. It's called uh, Winter Battle. And then I have like a test and uh, another one I made. Um, but yeah, you should like keep everything very organized. And also, um, when you're starting like a new stop motion or you're, or you're working on a stop motion that that's pretty long, you should storyboard it and you should write down a script. You should do that before you start building or animating. Um, so yeah, number six is just stay organized. My, uh, my seventh tip is to not give up and stay consistent. Uh, doing stop motion is not easy, um, but it's not too difficult. It just takes a lot of dedication uh, to the craft. And, you know, if you're dedicated and if you stay consistent and you, and you pull through with projects, it'll turn out good in the end. I have a really bad habit of starting projects and then kind of giving up halfway, um, which is my fault. It's nothing else. Um... But yeah, that's my uh, seventh tip. Just don't give up and stay consistent. For my eighth tip, uh, it's just, you know, while you're animating, just listen to music or uh, listen to a podcast. Um, it makes it much more bearable um, so you can be entertained while you're doing something that is relatively tedious. Um, once you're good enough, like, you can, you can animate while listening to other content. Um... So yeah, that's my eighth tip. For my ninth tip, uh, you know, when you're new, you should start with low FPS, uh, like 8 FPS, 10 FPS, and once you're more comfortable, you can move up to 12 FPS. I started at 10, I'm still at 10, but with the next, with the next uh, stop motions, I'm going to try to go to 12, just to get it slightly smoother. Um, 10 does not look bad, it looks good enough if you know what you're doing. Um... So yeah, just start with low FPS. For my 10th tip, it is three-point lighting or lighting in general. Um, every other video about stop motion says this, like you should have three lights. So one, focus on the subject, uh, another one, lighting the area behind the subject, and the third one, lighting the background. And that just, overall, if you do it correctly, um, it gives like a really well-balanced picture of lighting. Um, I haven't taken a photography class, so I still don't really know what I'm talking about, but I think that's what they mean. So this one is my main one. That's lighting behind the subject, and that's lighting the background. My 11th tip is a little random, um, kind of obvious, but not too obvious to uh, beginners. Um, instead of, I would recommend instead of using a, like a camera mount, or a tripod, you should try using Lego itself as a as a mount for the for the camera. And the great thing about Lego is that you can, you know, adjust it yourself. You can add pieces, add plates, um, raise it, lower it, whatever you want to do. So yeah, um, instead of going out and buying a tripod that is clumsy to use, I mean not clumsy, but you can 
get something just as good with Lego. So yeah, that's my 11th tip. For my uh, 12th tip, uh, use manual settings on your camera all the time. Uh, manual settings just gives you much more control and, and you will realize when you start, like you really need that control to control the picture and, and control the image. Um, so yeah, just use manual settings. And for my 13th tip and, and final tip, um, save your settings so write like physically write down what settings you're using using because you know when you when you do uh, stop motion you're not going to animate an entire movie in one sitting you could do that if you're crazy um but you know you have to go to bed or do other stuff and you have to turn off your camera so when you're turning off your camera sometimes your settings may reset or something like that so that's why you need to write down your settings so when you come back you can Put in your settings again and the whole the whole stop motion will look consistent you can see in my earlier uh, stop motions that that the the lighting kind of changes like in certain parts like it gets brighter and then, and then it gets darker that's because i was using different settings on accident uh while i was animating and it's fairly noticeable but to get around that just make sure you uh, write down what settings you're using and use the same settings the whole time. So yeah guys, this was my uh, 13 tips for Lego stop motion. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you got a lot of use out of out of this. This wasn't in any particular order. It was just uh, you know 13 things I thought of. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have a good day and I will see you next time.